Okay, how many people were here last month? Okay, a few. So um, Matt last month talked a bit about Firebase and Ember, so I'll try not to cross over too many things. Um, so basically, Firebase is a scalable real-time backend, they call it. So it's basically a JSON blob in the cloud, um, where each node in this JSON blob has a URL attached to it, and you can attach event handlers to these things. You can say, right, when foobar changes or adds, has a child added or is removed, do something. Um, and then it's got a JavaScript client, it's got an Android client, it's got an iOS client, so you can have all these things meant to be talking to each other if you've got Wi-Fi. We'll see what happens here. Uh, and basically, so you can listen to child added events, child change events, child removed events, and do stuff. Um, this doesn't fit in with Ember particularly well, just because everything here is using callbacks, Ember prefers promises. Um, so there's a, yeah, so basically when, when things happen, we want things to happen within a run loop. Um, so there's kind of naive ways of doing this by basically every time a child is added, stick a uh, Ember run around it, uh, create a new thing, do various things. Um, the problem here you run into quite quickly is if you do every single event in its own run loop, things get very slow, which is quite interesting. You can actually watch a page build as every single node added event is happening in its own run loop. Looks quite interesting, but not great for a production system. So um, Firebase have got their own library called Ember Fire, which was released a couple of months ago. This is what Matt talked about last month. Uh, and this is basically a really, really thin wrapper around the Firebase library. I think it's about 120, 140 lines of code. Um, and it means you can create a, an array, point it towards a Firebase reference, and it'll update in real time. Uh, or you can cr uh, create a reference to an object, and as things happen out in the cloud, it'll update. Any changes you make locally, they'll get synced to the cloud, and it's meant to sync with all your devices. Um, so again, the problem here is with it being a really, really shallow wrapper, again, this does nothing with the run loop. Uh, it does nothing with promises. So you find yourself building lots of things on top of this, at which point you might as well not be using this library in the first place. And Matt talked about a lot of the issues uh, last month. Um, we've been using Firebase on a yet-to-be-launched system coming out in a couple of months. Um, so before Ember Fire was released and um, before any of the kind of Ember data um, uh, adapters were, were released. Um, we've been writing our own library, um, which we called Fireplace. Uh, so basically, it, it, it does what you'd expect from a kind of JavaScript ORM. You can define models, you can set attributes, you can say what type these attributes are so that they're synchronized. Again, not something the Ember Fire library does, it just expects, it gives you back strings if they're stored as strings in the database, you actually want them as dates all this kind of stuff, gives you associations, all these kind of things that you would expect. Um, so yeah, you've got attributes, you can set specific keys for these attributes, so they're stored as different things in, the, in, in, Ember, in Firebase. Uh, you can give them types, so this is a number, and it makes sure it's coerced to that, to and from Firebase. Give things defaults, defaults can be functions, various things like that, everything you'd kind of expect. Um, so how do you use it? Right. You start off, again, very similar to Ember data in that everything happens through a store. And this store, you give a Firebase root, and that is where the data is being stored. It's where it's going to fetch all the data from. Um, so you create records, again, pretty much identical to, to Ember data at the moment. You say, OK, this store, create record, stores injected into all your controllers, roots, your components. Uh, so you've got access to this in most places that you would need to. Uh, and if you need it somewhere else, you're probably doing things wrong. Uh, so here we can create a record, save it, create an address, push that into that record, then save that, that again. Now, one of the main differences here between this and a lot of the other Firebase libraries is that until you save, this isn't synced. Um, we found there were 50% like, of the times you wanted things to happen immediately. And the other 50% of the times you want to wait because maybe you want to validate a form, you're you know, filling in half the thing and you want to save it at the end. 
So it's a lot easier to say explicitly, I want this thing to go to the server now, versus, oh crap, it's gone to the server, how do I stop it? Um, and this is where we'll see if any of this stuff works. Right, okay, so we've created a person. The right bit here is basically what's in, in Firebase at the moment. So we create a person. I can add an address to that. There we go, cool. So we've created something. It's in Firebase. It's been synced to various machines that are on the internet. Um, and then we can find them by basically this store fetch person returns a promise and that gets resolved when all those things have been loaded uh, or what it can initially get is loaded. And then that's a live collection. So whenever anyone from any device then adds something to that list, it's added to the database, which is then immediately synced to the front end. Um, we can then limit that by just saying limit some number. Uh, and that'll take the bottom part of the list. Basically, Firebase assumes, that, uh, Firebase assumes that the last things you put in there are normally what you want to get out. So if you've got um, you know, a chat application, it's normally like the last X records that you want to display. Uh, and then if we add a bunch more people, you'll see that that list is capped to five there, and it just removes the top one, adds one in the bottom. Again, Firebase takes care of all that. Um, so updating, again, this is kind of exactly what you'd expect from you know, Ember data style kind of thing. You just set some properties, you save, and then you can see the bit on the right is changing as the thing in the database has changed. All you've had to do is set your properties, set save, things are all synced, everyone's seen the same thing. Um, so Firebase is just a big list of JSON. But there's a few properties behind here that you can't see that aren't returned in the default JSON response, which is a, a property field. So you can set a property on each one of these nodes um, called priority, and that determines how this thing is sorted in, in the database. So if we add a few records to the company, this is sorted by, where are we? Uh, sorted by um, name, just because we've aliased property. Uh, the priority property to name Firebase is on Fireplace is handling whenever you save that, update the property field, uh, the priority field, and it keeps all that kind of stuff in, in sync. Okay, cool. So you can filter records by basically saying, uh, I want to start at this point, end at this point, and that will go off the priorities you've set. Uh, and if you don't have a priority, that will go off the ID of the, the node. So here we're basically saying starting at A, ending at J, get me all the companies back that's got a name in between those. In this case, it's just the one, because uh, everything else is, is after that. Um, cool, so that's all pretty, pretty simple. Um, so we showed before where a person can have many addresses, and that's stored just as an embedded bit of JSON under, underneath each person. Uh, much like, where are we? This guy. So this guy has got, uh, yeah, this one. It's got the address embedded within the document, um, which isn't what you always want. Uh, sometimes you want that to be connected somewhere else. So we've got our companies here. I'm going to say each company has many employees, and that's not embedded. So this is basically just going to be a list of IDs for each company. So we can move these things across. And then again, back up here, we can see that this company has a list of employees, which is person ID true, which is basically saying, this node exists, go look up the, the person uh, referenced at this. And Fireplace knows that it's the person object you want because it has many people. Uh, it tries to figure out things by the name. Um, so you've got a has many relationship with things stored somewhere else. You can then also store some metadata on there. So if you want to say, uh, we've got these five people working here. What is, what's their job title? What department do they work at? And that wants to be stored on the relationship, not the actual person object, because that person could work at many different places if they're, they're moonlighting. Uh, so you can have a notion of a meta model, which is basically, okay, this company has employees, which are many people, not embedded as an employee. And that employee is basically um, 
uh, Ember object proxy that wraps whatever comes back from, uh, from the person, and then you can attach other information to it. So here we can say, uh, so you see that over here on the right, instead of it just being um, employee ID, person ID true, you then attach some extra information to it. Uh, and then that's specific to that, that relation. Um, so the other kind of association you've got is, so you've got embedded, you've got embedded, uh, sort of non-embedded where you've just got a list of IDs, and then you've got detached, which is basically, this thing has some other things, but the data's not stored with me, it's stored in some other index. Um, so because of the structure, <laughs> go back. Yeah, uh, because of the structure of Firebase being one big JSON tree, uh, sometimes you want to either store things in different orders based on uh, some kind of property. You want to store multiple indexes maybe for uh, an individual association. Uh, so here you can basically say, we go in the other direction here from a person to a company to say, this is, these are the companies that I work at. We could just model this as, again, uh, has many... Um, embedded false, but in this case we want to store this somewhere else in the tree. Uh, so we can just give this a path to say, okay, store this index at slash employments, ID being this object's ID, and this path can be kind of any kind of level of complexity. So here we can say this person works at these four companies, busy guy, and this is just stored at slash employments, person ID. Um, so quite a lot of things, if you're doing like different kinds of ordering, so if you've got a task manager and each person has a bunch of tasks and those tasks can be sorted by you know, created date, last updated date, various other things, you could do that locally by just getting all that data back and then sorting it. But if you have a ton of data, um, you want to leave that kind of down to, to Firebase, uh, you end up having a few of these indexes per kind of record. So um, same with permission-based stuff. So this person has access to these things. Um, and it's kind of down to you as the client to manage those indexes. You're taking on, on some of these kind of database complexity of managing your indexes locally. Or you can have a server updating these things for you. Um, so yeah, we've seen there that you can customize the path for a, a relationship. You can also customize where you're storing this data. So in this case, uh, app.person would normally be stored at slash people. Uh, using Ember Inflector to figure out a um, pluralized version of that. Uh, and you can just say, right, okay, in, in this case, this model is stored at this path in your data uh, in Firebase. Uh, and like the path for the detached associations, you can also have that as any kind of complexity. So in this case, a person is stored at members slash four slash some project, and then that'll have an index of, of in this case, the actual models there in, in Firebase. Uh, in that case, whenever you create a person or go look for a person, you have to give it that project and say, I want to find the people for this specific project. Uh, so in this case, you've set up your model and you say, it's always got a project. When we fetch it from the database, it's this project. And when you've got an, any association, you say, OK, this is the, uh, the query that fulfills the path of this, this item. Um, so we've got Ember Inspector support with this. So if I bring up the inspector, so here we can see all the data that has been loaded, and then you can inspect, OK, these are all the people that we've either created or, or found, uh, all the, the data associated that, and the, the path on, on Firebase, which is really handy when you think you've stored something in one place and actually it's somewhere else. Or, yeah various things. It makes it a hell of a lot easier to debug, especially because this isn't going over Ajax. You've got no way of saying, OK, I've saved this. Where's it gone? Um, so you can open up the network inspector and look at your Ajax request and see, see what's happened. Uh, it's really quite handy to be able to say, this object thinks it's meant to be stored here. It's not. And you can do all kind of filtering. So that's really quite cool. Uh, and the promises. Um, plug into Ember Inspector will be quite handy as well. So you can say, okay, this has been saved. What stage is it at? And we got there. <laughs> Questions? <laughs>
never doing a live demo again. <laughs> so this, this looks like very, very close to like an actual like end, end the data adapter. Yeah. But deliberately, it's, it's not. So no, and when we started working on this, Ember data was kind of prior to the JJ Abrams reboot boot kind of stuff. Uh, and similar times, because you had the kind of trying to fit all these kind of things into Ember data <coughs> when it's kind of a moving target is yeah. a bit of a nightmare. Um, and just kind of a lot of parts of Ember data kind of assume a REST kind of API where you know, here you've got a, a different structure, and by building something specific, we can assume things like everything has a reference, everything knows. It's tree, so we know that um, a person that has an address that has something else is at this path by the nature of its of its structure. So it's a hell of a lot easier to do something separate. Um, likewise, with the Ember models, got a Firebase adapter as well. But again, it's kind of the same kind of level of um, Ember Fire. That it's it's really simple. Um, and when Ember Fire came out, it was a case of, oh, can we contribute to this? But Ember Fire is about 120 lines of code. This is about one and a half, two thousand lines. It felt a bit rude to open up a pull request, which is yeah. all this new stuff. Uh, so we'll keep it separate for now. But yeah, if we can merge some of this stuff in with um, Ember Data or other things, that would be great. Um, when building this, it kind of there's a lot of bits here that are either carbon copy or very, very similar to things that Ember Data do and Ember Model do. Especially things like uh, attributes and serializing. So you've got a date, turn it into an ISO eight six zero one string when you serialize. Half of this stuff is just basically lifted across. It'd be quite nice if that was extracted out into a separate library, so various different uh, ORM kind of things can can benefit from that. Yeah. I've got more of Firebase questions. So yep. A huge amount about it, but it doesn't do any kind of logic server, does it? it just effectively. No, it's pretty much just, just a dumb just data just store. Dump, yeah. Dump your JSON into there. Yeah. This this thing, thing belongs at this node. So You've got kind of security things you can say. Uh, only these kind of people, people who are logged in, can see this node. Uh, so you can restrict your data quite nicely. But you other can't than do that, any it's kind of business logic. No, no, nothing like that. No. So, do you do all that in the client? Then? Um, at the moment, we're doing everything in the client, just because it's a lot easier. Um, but in the future, some of this stuff will farm off to the server. So there's <coughs> node bindings as well. So you can have a uh, a few node servers running that just. You, know, you could put something in, in one place, you node know, then looks at that and you know, shuffles data around. Uh, we're doing similar things so that we can synchronize what's in Firebase with our other databases. Because obviously, you can't do things like full text search. Yeah. So we have a, a, a node server that basically anything that happens in Firebase uh, adds an event to a queue. Node server goes, OK, something's changed. Stick it in um, Elasticsearch uh, just so you can keep all these various things in sync. Uh, and anything that does require, yeah, you kind of business logic, you can scroll away on the server there. Yeah. yeah. Mm. How does Firebase compare to something like uh, Pusher? If you use that? Yeah, well, we start we start off in Pusher, um, and I was spending. We, we had a, a, a nice REST API um, using like, Ember model and, and things like that, and that was you do something on the server, and that would um, send off a, a Pusher notification. And I was just spending my entire life handling, right, okay, on this page, what push notifications happen? How does the client react to that? And I was spending all my time dealing with just the kind of logic of sync. Now, what happens if you, you know, reorder a, um, a, a list? What kind of AJAX response do we send for that? And what kind of push notification do we get back? Uh, and in the end, I just spent so much time micromanaging. It was quite nice just to say, Firebase does it all. Let me just get on with actually building the application itself. Um, so it depends on what kind of things you're doing. I think Pusher is fantastic, but when your entire app is sync, yeah. it's quite nice to have something that just takes care of the whole sync side of things for you. With storing um, sort of user data, mm -hmm. is there any way of setting the IDs yourself so you can sync it up the fourth side? Yeah, so uh, by default, when you create a record, it just pushes it on and, and push just creates a, a generated ID, which is kind of reasonable guarantee to be um, at the bottom of a list, so it you know, keeps everything in order. Uh, but you can set the ID yourself and it'll well, just... Do that, yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as, uh, as long as it's just a, you know, a string and it doesn't have two or three different special characters in there, can't start off with a dot, you're pretty much free to, to do whatever you want with, uh, with the IDs, yeah. So yeah, in quite a lot of places we have the IDs being Mongo IDs just because that's what we were originally using, things like that, but yeah, you've got complete control over that. 
was wondering like how hard it would be uh, to switch to the fireplace if I have like Ember model in applications and what would you like to do to use it instead? Um, most things are kind of pretty much the same, um, so it wouldn't be too much work. I wouldn't so select. In sync with the current Ember model API. Yeah, so um, I've kind of stuck to most of. The, well, Ember model doesn't use a store. But other than that, the kind of notion of fetch returning a promise versus find returning the actual object. Uh, same with collections, that if you do a fetch, it returns a promise. Um, that's all kind of pretty much the same as, as Ember model. Um, so I kind of tried to take inspiration or wholesale steal things from Ember model and Ember data just to kind of try and keep things in sync. Um, and, and the data is either currently moving to or has moved to fetch being a promise, find being return the actual thing. Uh, when I looked today, to, it hadn't done yet, but moving to yeah, moving to yeah, yeah. So it's, it's trying to basically, if you've got something in the data, it's not going to work out the boat. But yeah, it shouldn't be too much problem to, to move across. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Again, I'll be at the top. <laughs>